We're always looking for good movies to watch, but sometimes we want something new, different, and fresh. Today we're talking five hidden gem films on HBO. What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. So, I could go the easy route and give you guys five really obvious movies on HBO right now. And maybe you've seen all of the films on this list, so I need you in the comments down below. Are you five for five, one for five? How many of these movies that we're talking about today have you seen? I tried to go a bit more obscure, but we're definitely catering to movie lovers here. And all of these films I'm either a huge fan of or I just love. So if you guys have any comments for me, what are some movies that you would recommend to me? Maybe some films that you would recommend to others? And be sure to smash that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more videos like this, we'll cover all of the different streaming services. And obviously, HBO in general also covers HBO Max. So whether you have the app or not, hopefully you'll find these films. I told you I was diving a bit deeper today. What in the world is the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford? And why is the title so long? I agree with you. The title is a bit long. But back in 2007, a movie came out, and not a lot of people, I think we're talking about it on the level that they should have. I just recently watched the rest of this movie for the first time. I had seen most of it, but I wanted to go back and log it on Letterboxd. And my goodness, this is just something else. Something completely different. The style, the way it's constructed, the voiceover, the plot in general is familiar. It's something we've seen. If Robert Ford, who has loved Jesse James since childhood, and he's trying to join this gang uh, of this outlaw, but he slowly becomes resentful, and it's this bitter battle between the two characters played by Casey Affleck and Brad Pitt. Now, the entire cast is crazy. You have Sam Rockwell. I mean, it is just stacked from top to bottom. But it's told in the stylistic way. You have this repetitive music all throughout the movie. Uh, you have the really just different look to the movie. I feel like some are going to watch this and say, eh, it's a bit slow, it's a bit boring. And I understand if you're not in love with this film. But it is absolutely, and that's kind of what we're going for in this video, different from any other Western-type, slow, dramatic-feeling film that you guys have seen in a while. In 2007, I mean, what a year. There will be blood. No country for old men. And you can add this to the list, because I think this is genuinely a great movie on HBO. Okay, you're not in the biopics, uh, crime-centric thrillers. Let's try something a bit more romantic. Shall we? Austin, come on, man. We don't want a rom-com. We don't want a dramatic, romantic film. Well... Before Sunrise is not only a great romance-centric film, it is one of the best and most well-made movies in that genre, or even outside of that genre, that I've ever seen. Now, I'm going to talk about the first film, even though I may even prefer Before Sunset. Both are on HBO, but this is where it all starts. And if you guys have never watched this first movie, Before Sunrise, I encourage you, I implore you, to check it out. It's a dialogue-centric film. It's all about these two young, thoughtful individuals who are always thinking, and you get a peek into their thought process as this movie progresses. It is a real time. We're going to follow these two people around, listen to them converse, and uh, leave them before sunrise. Okay, that sounds... But you have to look at the fact that this is a movie really built around filmmaking. Richard Linklater directs this film, writes this film to AT. The performances, uh, Ethan Hawke, Julie Delpy, they're both amazing. And it's a trilogy, folks. You have Before Sunrise, Sunset, Midnight, and we follow these individuals through the years and see what their relationship progresses, turns into. Uh, but if you haven't seen this first movie, this is where it all starts. And I recently watched this trilogy for the first time. It had to be one of the greatest binges. I mean, I couldn't stop. I went all the way through all three movies in one day. Um, and if you're a fan of dialogue and romance, I recommend this movie. Now, you not only have to want to watch a movie with Magnolia, you have to have three hours to watch Magnolia. So this is one I'm sure a lot of you will be like, I just don't have time for that. And I understand. Magnolia is long. But you think about what Paul Thomas Anderson does, you can probably imagine the kind of movie that you're getting. 
And then you look into what this film actually is and who the cast is. Tom Cruise, John C. Riley, Julianne Moore, Philip Seymour Hoffman. It's an epic mosaic of interrelated characters in search of love, forgiveness, and meaning in the San Fernando Valley. PTA likes the San Fernando Valley. He also likes drastically just wild character development and it's these interlacing stories and at first you're like what do all of these stories have to do with each other we're looking at Tom Cruise and uh, what his life is like being on stage and being so eccentric but then we slowly start to dive into how his problems are slowly progressing within his mind and that's kind of the case for every character I thought Philip Seymour Hoffman's performance in here was outstanding Julianne Moore is just like Oscar worthy and again, Tom Cruise may be his best performance I've ever seen, but you have PTA's direction. You have this wild film as it progresses. What happens in the third act, I'm not going to spoil it, but you will never, never expect it if you've never seen this movie before. Magnolia is unlike anything I've ever seen, and it has to be one of the most well-made movies, not only of that year, but maybe of that decade. Maybe one of the most obscure and underwatched movies I've ever seen. Uh, on HBO, you look at the user ratings on Rotten Tomatoes and everything else has had like 70,000, 80,000, 100,000. There's only a little under 3,000 ratings here. That means hardly anyone has seen this movie. Maybe it's where it was put out by Movie Pass. Thank you, Movie Pass, for just ruining the marketing for this film. It is American Animals. Now, I may be a bit biased because it takes place where I'm living at right now, in my hometown in Kentucky. But the cast here is exquisite. Evan Peters gives one of the best performances of that year. Uh, Barry Coogan is incredible. Bart Layton directs this movie. It is a combined documentary slash kind of a dramatic thriller, think Bernie, but more intense. And the way that this is filmed, I can't believe... Bart Layton has not done more, and it's just because there weren't enough eyes on this movie. It's all about four young men who mistake their lives for a movie because they want to do something eccentric, they want to do something different, and they attempt one of the most audacious heists in the history of the United States. This took place like 30 minutes down the road. Guys, this is a wild story. It will not turn out in the way that you think it's going to turn out, and again... These four individuals, the cast as a whole is great, but I love the chemistry or the lack thereof, and it has to be some of the best direction. This is one of my favorite movies of that year, by the way, 2018. It's incredible. I do want to give a shout out to my Discord really quick, Flick Fan Nation. If you guys have Discord, the link is in the pinned comment and the description down below. But they were talking about this film. I saw it was on HBO. I said, you know what? We're going to talk about it. It's the nice guys. Ryan Gosling, Russell Crowe, this movie was too much fun the year it came out. It was one of my favorite and just more energetic movies of the year. Not my favorite movie, but there is a nice balance of comedy and drama here. And this, when you think of Shane Black, you think of a movie like The Nice Guys. Kiss, kiss, bang, bang, obviously. But Ryan Gosling, Russell Crowe, their chemistry was phenomenal. And it had to be one of the funniest movies of that year, but also one of the most action-packed in the 1970s in Los Angeles. You have a mismatched pair of private eyes who are investigating a missing girl and the mysterious death of a porn star. So, again, very Shane Black-esque premise, but, man, the style of this movie was crazy. It captures the time period so well, the 70s, and... The plot does get a bit conventional in that third act, and I didn't love the way it wrapped up compared to the rest of the movie. I mean, still 56,000 user ratings, that's pretty good, right? So a lot of people have clearly seen the movie, but not enough, man. So those are five movies. Again, less obvious films than the big budget blockbusters on HBO or HBO Max right now. But again, I gotta know, how many of these movies have you seen, and are there even more obscure recommendations you all would give to others or for me. Please comment those down below. Guys, I love this series. It's so much fun making these videos. Uh, I'd love to do more. Again, if you want to support this video, that tells me you'd like to see more like this with different streaming services. Please comment what streaming service you'd like to see next. And stay tuned because possibly later on today I have a review for the one and only Ivan, the Brian Cranston gorilla movie. Okay, all right, see you soon.